Hi guys, this is Klazar, being another audio commentary, and this time I'm commentating on a game between NC Yellow and Red Nada, and this match was played in the Pro League between KTF and Pantech X, and this is being played on Talcross. I have to tell you, when I first saw NC Yellow's name on the team sheet for this matchup, I was filled with both excitement as well as incredible intense trepidation. Yellow is a player who is considered to be one of the greats of StarCraft, one of the original greats who pioneered pro gaming uh, as it is today, along with the likes of Boxer, Nada, I Love UUV, and other players. Um, he, he was a feared Zerg opponent in his time. Unfortunately for me, when I first started watching StarCraft, Yellow had just begun his slump, his decline. Um, he was starting to be inconsistent in the Star Leagues as well as in the Pro Leagues, and um, <coughs> has now for some time been very very inconsistent with his form he's not playing in any of the or rather we could say he has been consistently underperforming he hasn't been in any star leagues uh, for some time now and he's also uh, not been playing very regularly in the pro leagues for KTF uh, in fact when he has played it's mostly been in the 2v2 games and he has been distinctly anonymous in those as well so seeing him play today is something that I've been really looking forward to ever since I saw his name on the list but at the same time I really hope he can actually put up a fight and play a decent game I don't necessarily expect him to win not considering his opponent not at all but I do hope that he can put up a fight and entertain and show some of those flashes of brilliance that we were so used to seeing from him in the past long ago and that I certainly have seen uh, in the VODs that I have downloaded uh, of him his opponent today is Nada and uh, Nada is a striking player he he's just really the warhorse of the Pantech X team. If if Boxer is uh, Ace is main player, then you can say Pantech X is Nada with with a few randoms thrown into it. Although Pantech X does has have a few more distinguished players than that. But uh, Nada has really been the backbone of their team, and he has been performing consistently well in in this in in the tournament thus far, uh, playing very well in the Pro League for Pantech X. Most recently, he gave Gorash an absolute pumping uh, in the Ace matchup between SK Team One and uh, Pantech X. Uh, and Gorash is a player who's been ripping through Terran's left, right, and center. So to watch Gorash lose so resound so emphatically to Nada really put uh, Gorash's current resurgence into context and and raise questions about what Gorash is really capable of versus strong Terran players. Nada is very very strong against Zerg players. I've seen him really demolish players on this map, uh, and uh, I, I expect no less. Uh, from him here, I expect him to control the game. I expect expect him to control the the matchup. Uh, I, I, and this is really a map that that does make for longer games, and it makes for good, exciting games. Uh, and and it is a fairly balanced matchup. And it's very interesting here. Yellow has gone for his uh, natural expansion. He's also set up his spawning pool, but he hasn't he hasn't yet gone for that third hatchery. And that's very interesting to note. He's gone for the extractor. Uh, you can expect Nana to be going for a fast command center as well. There it is. So he's just set up that command center after one barracks, not even waiting for the factory. One barracks into command center. He obviously feels that he should be able to defend it against any rush uh, coming up and that's why he built that barracks so early as you can see Nada built his barracks very very early there um, and this is gonna put him uh, at least on par if not ahead economically to yellow because uh, e on economic terms with yellow because yellow has only just set up his um, uh, he's only set up one hatchery and he has not made three hatcheries he has not gone for that three hatch build and, and that's very surprising to see uh, in, in, in today's games to s for a player to not uh, build a three hatchery and actually yellow has set up a third hatchery yellow set up a third hatchery down in the south at the uh, five o'clock position and that is very very interesting to note so yellow being very very clever here um, he has uh, he's not only is he going to get extra gas from the hatchery but he's actually going to be deceiving Nada as to his tech and as to his build order because Nada has not seen that hatchery so Nada is going to assume that yellow is going for a two hatchery build and uh, yellow has actually started up his lair at his expansion as well so as soon as that hatchery went up the fact that yellow took that gas fairly early has allowed him to start up that lair so uh, a, a very interesting strategy by yellow uh, very innovative and definitely not something that Nada would be expecting uh, and, and Nada has to be wondering whether or not yellow has set up uh, a, a, a base elsewhere and Nada oh my god brilliance by Nada he sends an STV down to scout that south base knowing very well that it's very unlikely for a Zerg player to just tech to lair and to not have three hatcheries uh, and the fact that he didn't see a hatchery in yellow's main you can just see from the first person view mode of Nada uh, there that he didn't see the third hatchery in yellow's main and therefore he sent an STV down to the south to scout and he now knows uh, that that yellow is building that hatchery even though yellow did try to hide that tech from him so this is going to become absolutely crucial and I've seen this numerous times that Zerg players try to go for that third gas try to be a little bit greedy and build that third hatchery 
um, in another base away from their main uh, and more often than not the Terran player takes it down and that gives them enough of an economic advantage uh, to actually be able to win the game because uh, Yellow has invested and Nana is building a barracks Nana is building a proxy barracks behind Yellow's expansion at 5 o'clock and I don't think Yellow is aware of it Nana has used that SCV to hide that proxy barracks Yellow must know that there was an SCV in there and Yellow just going in with some Zerglings into Nana's uh, natural expansion but Nana wards him off with the group of Marines so um, this is going to be critical uh, if Yellow doesn't realize what Nana is doing and Yellow's already got his spire building but if Yellow doesn't realize that Nana's got that barracks there and if Nana is able to take that hatchery down that will be enough to swing the game in Nana's favor and, I'm, and I have to tell you, I've seen countless times Nada actually perform this maneuver, not necessarily proxying uh, a barracks behind. This is completely, uh, completely new. I haven't seen him do that that often, building a barracks that late. But I have seen him send units down uh, and take out those uh, expansions. And if he manages to do that, do that on this occasion, then Yellow is going to find himself uh, in a lot of trouble. And that's exactly what Nada needs to do. nada has got his uh, medic and marine and uh, firebat group out. I don't know if Yellow has many sunkens yet. He definitely needs to have a few sunkens. And Yellow is going to find himself a little bit stretched here. He's spread out all over the map. He's got his expansion at 5 o'clock as well as his main. Uh, and he's going to he's gonna have a difficult time defending them. And sorry, just to recap, Yellow is actually at the um, 10 o'clock position while Nada is at 1 o'clock. Uh, and Nada now... Uh, I think he seems to he seems to have gone actually for Yellow's main and I think that's a mistake. He should have gone straight for the expansion in the south. I guess what he's trying to do is hold Yellow's uh, Zerglings and Yellow's forces in his main while he kills that expansion with that proxy barracks. And that is very, very clever. And Yellow is actually moving his overlords back and he might actually find that barracks and Yellow really needs to see that barracks. If Yellow doesn't stop this now, he's going to end up losing all the resources he invested in that base and he will be far, far behind and he will not be able to catch up. And we're just switching to Yellow's first person view mode here to see if he's actually seen that barracks and he actually has you just got a glimpse of it there and he's seen that barracks now so he knows what's coming and that's forced Nana to actually initiate his attack Already, I think I'm sure he wanted to build up a couple more marines before going. Uh, and Yellow very wisely pulling his drones away. So Yellow actually hasn't lost anything thus far in this attack, and he's building a couple of sunkens there. Nana is going to build uh, a bunker there, or is that a, a, a turret he's building next to that, uh, next to um, that hatchery uh, to try and uh, uh, try and take it down? Uh, but not, but Yellow is building a sunken, so I'm not sure if that bunker is going to be within the range of that sunken or not. Um, I, I don't think it is. It's certainly not in range of the hatchery, so it's it's a bit of a useless bunker, but it is stopping Yellow from mining those minerals there. But Yellow is still getting the three gas. He's got his power up. He should have Mutilus coming soon. And Yellow's Mutilus arrived. Yellow's uh, playing this brilliantly here. He's got his Mutilus and his Zergens, and, he, and he's going in, and he's going to be able to take down this proxy attack from Nada. So Yellow brilliantly managing to defend this, and, and, and I think that that's a very, very key moment in this game. The fact that Yellow has successfully defended that base, and he's actually got two sunkens up there now, uh, and Yellow is now going to be able to harass Nara's economy. So that was very, very well played by uh, Yellow. He actually managed to defend that expansion at the 5 o'clock position, and that expansion is very, very key. That expansion uh, staying up means that Yellow is going to have three gas. It means that Nara is going to have a very hard time against Yellow uh, in this game now because of the fact that uh, Yellow has three gas to Nara's one. A and Yellow just micro in those mutilists there. You can see that his mutilist micro isn't really up to scratch uh, if you compare it to Savior's recent, excuse me, micro or that of July Zerg. And Yellow just picking up a couple of SC there, SCVs there. But see, he hasn't really killed much. He's only killed a turret or two, uh, or a turret and a half, and an SCV. And he's lost a couple of Mutalisks. So Nana doing a good job of defending his base. Uh, 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 this game is far from over. This game is far from having swung in Yellow's favor. But definitely the fact that Yellow has got his three hatcheries now, and that he's got the, the three gas, definitely gives him an edge in this game. Nana was not able to take that, that base at the south. And Nana really needs to do, some, do something about that. He needs to take that base down. And Nana moving out again with another Medic and Marine Force. And he got about two or three control groups of units there and, and, and 